Right. I saw Obama on TV and said, oh, I'm voting for this nigga. <laughs> I remember the day I voted for Obama. I voted in Ohio. And my vote matters in Ohio. Ohio is a battleground state. But when I pulled up to the polls, all the soldiers were in line. There were so many black people in that goddamn line, I didn't even know it was the polls. I thought it was a check cashing place. <laughs> we were hugging each other, and old people were singing hymns and spirituals and shit. It was like the O.J. Verdict times 10 or some shit. I've never seen black people that happy. Eight years later, I'm pulling up to the polls again. This time, I'm driving a brand new Porsche because the Obama years were very good to me. I was early voting. And when I parked my car, I figured out something that it would take the rest of the country another week to figure out. I understood that Donald Trump was gonna be our next president because in Ohio, unlike D.C., you could see the results in the parking lot. So all these goddamn pickup trucks and tractors and shit. <laughs> and then I walked up and I saw a long, long line of dusty white people. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, these were the poor whites. <laughs> and I must tell you, I've never had a problem with white people ever in my life. But full disclosure, the poor whites are my least favorites. <laughs> We've gotten a lot of trouble out of them. And I'd never seen so many of them up close. <laughs> I looked them right in their coal-smeared faces. <laughs> and to my surprise, you know what I didn't see? I didn't see one deplorable face in that group. I saw some angry faces and some determined faces, but they felt like decent folk. No, they did, in fact, I'm not even lying, and I didn't sound fucked up, but I felt sorry for them. I know the game now. I know that rich white people call poor white people trash. And the only reason I know that is because I made so much money last year, <laughs> the rich whites told me they say it at a cocktail party. <laughs> and I'm not with that shit. And I stood with them in line, like all of us Americans are required to do in a democracy. Nobody skips the line to vote. And I listened to them. I listened to them say naive, poor white people things. <laughs> Man, Donald Trump's gonna go to Washington and he's gonna fight for us. I'm standing there thinking to my mind, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> You are poor. <laughs> He's fighting for me. <laughs> and they all looked at me. They could tell who I was voting for just as easily as I could tell who they were voting for. But do you guys know what we all had in common? Not one of us, not a single one of us, Look like we felt good about what we had to do in that booth. <laughs> we were just doing our goddamn duty. Yes, I voted for Hillary Clinton. Of course I did. I voted for her because I liked what she said vastly better than I liked what he said. But to be honest with you, at that point, that shit was like watching Darth Vader do the I Have a Dream speech. That bitch is mean as hell. She had already karate kid swept Bernie Sanders' legs from underneath him. Boy, it was hard voting for that shit. <laughs> but that, it was the lesser of the evils. I know you were a Clinton supporter, Miss I. I'm sorry to say like that. It didn't feel bad voting for her, but it didn't feel as good as it should have. She was gonna be our first woman president. They were gonna make coins out of this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> 
and somehow she just missed the dunk. <laughs> of course she should have beat him. Of course she should have beat him. You know what voting for her felt like? It was bittersweet. It felt like I was lucky enough to eat Halle Berry's pussy. <laughs> and whilst I was doing so, she fucking farted in my face, man. Now, you understand, I'd still do it. <laughs> but boy, I wish she didn't fart in this great nation's face. <laughs> and, and the reason that I bring that up tonight and why it's relevant now is because less than a year ago, the woman that he allegedly whistled at admitted on her deathbed that she lied in her court testimony. And you can imagine when we read that shit, we was like, ooh, you lying ass bitch. <laughs> it was furious. But that was my initial reaction. And initial reactions that we all learned as we get older are, are often wrong or more often incomplete. They call this phenomenon standing too close to an elephant. The analogy being that if you stand too close to an elephant, you can't see the elephant. All you see is its penis-like skin. <laughs> you gotta step back and give it a better look. And on stepping back and thinking about it for a few moments, I realized that it must have been very difficult for this woman to tell the truth that heinous about herself at any point in her life, even the very end. And I was grateful that she had the courage to tell it before she left this world, because it's an important truth and we needed to know. And I said to myself, well, thank you for telling the truth, you lying ass bitch. <laughs> and then time goes on, and then after time, you can kind of see the whole elephant. And it's humbling, because you realize that this woman lied, and that lie caused the murder. But that murder set in motion a sequence of events that made my wonderful life possible, that made this very night possible. How could this be that this lie could make the world a better place? It's maddening. And that's how I feel about this president. I feel like this motherfucker might be the lie that saves us all because I have never felt more American than when we all hate on this motherfucker together. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's good. And when it happens, I can see everybody that's struggling. So if I'm on stage and I tell a joke that makes you want to beat up a transgender, then you're probably a piece of shit and don't come see me anymore. <laughs> Or if you don't understand that when a football player takes a knee during the national anthem, he's actually standing up for me, then you might not want to fuck with me anymore. But I swear, no matter how bad it gets, you're my countrymen, and I know for a fact that I'm determined to work shit out with y'all. And if that woman that said that heinous lie was alive today, I would thank her for lying. And then I would kick her in the pussy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Washington, D.C. God bless you, and good night. Dripping from my sleeve, cause my heart don't see that intention. 
visions are covered with smiles and positivity. Behind the fake is a snake that could murder me. Murder. Life's filled with things you never heard of. Been trying to get it since niggas was reading word up. Struggles that I've been through make the average man curl up. Godson coming, grandma saying, hurry up. Hurry up. Yeah. Yeah. And now we get to the core of the crisis. What, what is a woman? What is that in this day and time? Is there even such thing as a woman or a man or anything? Hmm, hmm, seems to be a question nowadays. Now listen, women get mad at me, gay people get mad at me, lesbians get mad at me, but I'm gonna tell you right now, and this is true, these transgenders, these niggas want me dead. I've gone too far, I've said too much. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I'm very worried about it. I'm not even joking. Every time I come out on stage, I be scared. I be looking around the crowd, searching for knuckles and Adam's apples to see where the threats might be coming from. <laughs> oh. A nigga came up to me on the street the other day. He said, careful Dave, they after you. I said, what? One they or many they's. <laughs> Before I even say anything about that community, you must know, and I hope you all feel the same way, I am not indifferent to the suffering of someone else. There's laws, the mean laws. In our country, North Carolina passed a law once that said a person in North Carolina must use the restroom that corresponds with the gender they were assigned on their birth certificate. No, 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 no. No, that's not a good law. That's a mean law. No American should have to present a birth certificate Take a shit at Walmart in Greensboro, North Carolina, where the baby shot and killed a motherfucker. <laughs> you have to ask yourself, if you're thinking about it, who are these laws designed to protect? Like, let's say they designed this law to protect me, my interests. Transphobic comedian Dave Chappelle. And let's say that I'm, uh, I'm in Walmart uh, doing a little shopping with my family. Now, I should tell you, if that ever happens in real life, you should know that my dreams didn't work out. <laughs> but let's say something goes horribly wrong and there I am in Walmart with the poor whites rummaging around for mediocre goods and services. And then I gotta go to the restroom. So I excuse myself from my family, I go to the men's room. Now I'm standing at the urinal, taking a leak. And, and, and this is what this law is gonna do. And suddenly, a woman walks into the men's room. I'm gonna be like, that's strange. <laughs> and then she stands shoulder to shoulder with me at the urinal. I'm gonna be like, ugh, bitch, what's going on with you? <laughs> and then she hikes her skirt up and pulls a real live meaty dick out. <laughs> and what do you think I'm gonna say? <sighs> Thank God she's in here with me. <laughs> At least now I know my family's safe. <laughs> mm -mm. No, I'm not gonna feel that way at all. I'm gonna feel very uncomfortable. I would feel better if it was a man.
with a vagina <laughs> that backed up to the urinal next to me. <laughs> I wouldn't even think about that. I'd just be like, hmm, that's funny. <laughs> this guy is peeing out of his butt for some reason. <laughs> oh my God, he must be a veteran. Thank you for your service. Look, it was way more intense than what you guys might have read. I don't know what you read, but... The kid, while we was beating on him, reached in his waistband, pulled out a .22 caliber pistol. That shit was mayhem. Everybody started screaming. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, he's got a gun. He's got a gun. And then I got scared. I was in the back, but I was scared. Because I knew that everybody that was with me was armed. Yes. If they had shot and killed this kid on stage at the Hollywood Bowl, like I pay you to do, Travis. <laughs> but Travis G'd up. Travis wrestled the gun out of the kid's hand, and then he took it like this and tried to chamber the round, and he couldn't. So he pulled the trigger, and it wasn't a gun. A knife blade popped out of the front. I guess this kid was going to stab me. Some scary shit. So the next night, even though I didn't have a show, I said, I gotta get right back on stage. And I went and did a show. And someone in the audience screamed out, Dave, what happened with the attack? And I didn't know there was a journalist in the room. All I said was that this nigga had a knife that I identified as a gun. <laughs> I got six more weeks of bad press for that joke. I didn't even do nothing to this thing. That's not right. That was not right. And then the New York Post went to the jail and interviewed my attacker like he was some kind of hero. And I read that interview. It turns out the entire attack was my fault. Yes, I triggered him. I didn't mean to. I had done jokes about the homeless. It turns out this young man was homeless, and I mean, there's no way I could have known this. But I will say, um, for a homeless guy, this, this nigga had incredible seats. <laughs> oh, and they said I triggered him because, because I had done LBGTQ jokes, and it, and it turns out this fellow was a B. That was the headline in the article that said, Dave Chappelle's alleged attacker is bisexual. I said, alleged attacker? <laughs> this motherfucker definitely attacked me. I'll show you the tape. He's allegedly bisexual. I'm gonna need to see him suck somebody's dick before I believe the rest of this article. <laughs> I read that shit in the paper, I was horrified. I was like, oh, bisexual? I could have been raped. No, 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 you know what, though? It's not funny because... Because after all that madness ensued, I went to the hotel room. I, I, I was by myself, and I opened the door, and my wife was in there alone. She was sobbing, like sobbing. I said, oh, my God, what's wrong with you, bitch? Did you get attacked, too? <laughs> And she's crying, she said, she said, oh my God, David. She said, if you had died tonight, me and the kids would have nothing. <laughs> then I knew it was serious. So I sat down on the bed next to her. And I reached in my pocket, I pulled some keys out that she'd never seen before. She said, oh, what are those keys? And I gently placed them in her hands. I said, sweetheart, those are the keys to my safe deposit box. God forbid anything ever happen to me. But if it does, don't even worry about it. You and the kids have everything you need in that box. I've already taken care of it. 
And she was looking at them keys. And I could see her mind realize what we were actually talking about. And then she just started crying harder. And to be honest with you, that made me cry a little bit too. And we hugged each other real tight. <laughs> Do you know this bitch looked in the box while I'm alive and well? <laughs> Who does that? Oh my God. And then she was mad at me. She said, God damn it, David, I opened that box. I said, you did. She said, yes, I did. And there was nothing in there. I said, nothing. Oh. She said, nothing except your stupid joke book. I said, Whoosh. I said, well, sweetie, look. If you tell those jokes exactly how they're written, you and the kids should be fine. They're really good jokes. <laughs> She's like, good jokes? What is this shit? Come join me in my watery grave. No, you gotta roll your throat. <laughs> join me in my watery grave. <laughs> Oh boy, I've been married a long time. I have, man, you know, I talk a lot of shit about my wife, but I love her very much. In fact, you know, you guys wouldn't believe this about me. I'm, I'm a jealous husband. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, let me tell you something. One time I thought my wife was cheating on me. Yes, nigga, yes. <laughs> that was one of the worst days of my fucking life. I couldn't take it. And I'm embarrassed about it now, but I can talk about it. You know what I did? It's fucked up, but I did do this. I, I waited. I waited for her to fall asleep. And when I waited a long time, she's Asian. I couldn't tell if she was asleep or not. I was looking at her. And when I was sure she was asleep, you know what I did? I stole the iPhone. Took it downstairs and started trying out passwords to see if I could open it. I couldn't figure out the password. Then I remembered, it's an iPhone. This shit has facial recognition. I was just like, oh. <laughs> and that shit opened right up. And I saw a text message in there from a fella named Earl. I don't know anybody named Earl. I woke her up out of her sleep. I said, wake the fuck up. Who the fuck is Earl? And she said, David, what are you talking about? Oh, don't you play dumb with me, bitch. I done opened your phone. Who is Earl? And she said, oh my God, David. That's gay Earl from the hair salon. I said, word, what am I, dummy? How am I supposed to know this nigga is gay? And she was calm. She said, read his text and look at his pictures. I started reading the text. Hmm. <laughs> this fella sure does spell girl with a U a lot. <laughs> and I switched over and looked at his pictures and I couldn't believe it. This fella looked gay and still pictures. His mouth was open in every shot. <laughs> and then I knew she was telling the truth. And then I felt like dumb. I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, here, here, take your phone. I'm sorry, just, just, go, just go back to sleep. All right, I'm sorry, I just, I guess I just been insecure because all this cheating I've been doing. Good night. <laughs> and she didn't let me leave. She said, well, since you want to wake a bitch up, and then she pulled my phone from under her pillow. I said, what the fuck? She said, who is this bitch in this picture? I said, how'd you open that phone? She said, it was easy, nigga. All I had to do was mash my nose and go like this, and it opened right up. I said, what the fuck? She said, who is this bitch? I said, give me that. 
Oh, girl, relax. That ain't no bitch. This is my friend, Deborah. <laughs> I'ma close the night with a long story. Do you mind? All right, it's a long one, so pretend that I've finished because I gotta go get a cigarette, all right? I'm not done, but just, just act like it. I, I would prefer staying in the Olsen's for acting. Thank you very much, good night. <laughs> this is my Bible. My son just turned 18 years old. Best day of my life because He's one of the trios I have. I have three kids and he's the last. 18 years old and there's a man that's in his 50s. When you see your kids get 18 years old, that is your chance for you to live your life. I tell my kids all the time, once you turn 18, our relationship has changed. <laughs> How is that daddy? I said, let me explain. I am no longer the provider. I am the advisor. <laughs> So when you got a problem now, nigga, I say, this is what I would do if I was you. <laughs> but you was raised right, nigga. Make good decisions. Close the door so me and your future stepmama can get busy. <laughs> no, man, when your kids become an adult, it is your time to capture the things that you wanted to do that you sacrificed by raising them. Tell, I tell people all the time, kids are the most expensive thing you will ever purchase to ever have in your life because they at the maximum they're dream killers <laughs> at the minimum nigga they're dream delayers because you done put what you wanted to do to facilitate their growth and when they get 18 it's your time for you to do the things you need to do because you're in the fourth quarter of your life but some of y'all don't y'all still be in your kids lives when they're 18 as if they was an adolescent and I don't blame most of y'all because y'all let these kids around here manipulate you. Because them kids sit down and throw that guilt on you. They've been, they been in your life and seen some of the times when you was at your lowest point. And they throw that shit in your face. They also know that there's things that you wanted to do for them that you couldn't do for them and you feel guilty about that and they play that shit on you. And I'm telling you right now, from the bottom of my heart, fuck these kids. <laughs> don't you let these motherfuckers fuck with you. I'll tell you right now, if you did everything to the best of your ability to provide for your kids, you are a great ass parent. Don't you let these little motherfuckers make you feel bad? I'm telling you right goddamn now. I wish one of my kids would tell me I'm not a great ass father. I only got one question for them, period. If I'm not a great father, nigga, who are you comparing me to? Who this mythological black man you think gonna make the sacrifices I did and all this for you like I did? Take you to all these activities, go to your basketball game, be there for three hours, and your ass don't even get in the game. <laughs> me and you sitting on the bench. You could have FaceTime me this bullshit, sitting over there like you assistant coach and shit. Since we comparing, you ain't a good ass child. Almost lost my job fucking with your ass. <laughs> Fuck these kids. These ain't jokes. I had a time to spend time with my son and they make me learn that our kids are not built like us. My son don't have no swag, zero, nada, none. I told him the other day, let's ride, Clyde. This nigga like, who's Clyde, daddy? Get your ass in the car. I just wanna know who Clyde is. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a friend of yours? No, nigga, you Clyde. Mm-mm, my -mm, name Nathaniel. Open your mouth, let me swab you. You gotta understand, you can't raise your kids the way you was raised. It does not apply. The way we was raised does not have nothing to do with our kids. You gotta understand that we are inner city parents raising suburban kids. So all the things we went through does not apply to these little soft motherfuckers we dealing with. You put your hands on your kids. Just one of the ass whooping that your mother and father gave you. Put it on your kids. You'll scar these little soft motherfuckers for life. They can't do it. I just try to punish my son, send him to his room. This nigga write a suicide note. He be in there, daddy, I don't know how long I can take this shit. The walls are coming in on me. So this nigga can never go to jail. He can't even stay in his own room with an Xbox. <laughs> These ain't jokes. 
My son got a concussion from falling in grass. He was in the hospital for three weeks. Hey, what's happened? What happened to him? I said, he tripped out back. They ain't built like us. You buy him a bike, you gotta get a helmet, shoulder pads, knee pads. You playing football or riding a bike, motherfucker. They not built like us. We used to go to the park, get on the swing set, and wrap the pole. Let one of these kids go to a swing set and try to wrap the pole. Come back, chain around the neck. <laughs> He's like, get your ass down from there. Well, you said, go around and get your motherfucking ass. They not built like us. Can't leave them in the car when it's hot. Our mother left us in the car when it was hot. We were just smart enough to get the fuck out. And look at the door to see when she coming out. Oh, here she coming. Get back in the car. Get back. That's right. I was sitting over here. You right. You right. You right. I was over here. You right. You right. Fuck her. It don't take you no three hours getting no tuna fish. Our kids just stay in the car and die. Get your ass out the car. You said don't get out. It's 200 degrees, motherfucker. Die in the car. Stupid motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck these kids. But you ain't got to put your hands on no kids. Your kids ain't doing what they're supposed to do. I done found their Achilles heel. I know exactly what you can get, how you can get them. They ain't doing what the fuck they supposed to do. Found their weakness. No, nah, it ain't the phone. No. Nah. All you need to do, turn that motherfucker Wi-Fi off. <laughs> they on that shit like crap. I ain't lying to you. My son, he be upstairs, I be calling him. Come downstairs, nigga, act like he don't hear me. I don't even call him no more. He don't do what the fuck he supposed to do. All I do is unplug that Wi-Fi. Mm. And then come to daddy, we ain't got no signal. <laughs> signal, daddy, signal. I'm playing Fortnite. I'm winning this game. I ain't got no, I ain't got no signal. So this nigga's cracking. Look at him. I ain't got no signal today. He's got no winning he look at me, Daddy, you got signal. I say, I got signal. <laughs> I get signal. Take that trash out, nigga. You take that trash out, nigga. I see 5G in your future. I'm Earthquake. I love y'all all day long. This is how we do it. Everybody's mad at police now. I watched that, you see that shit on Netflix? The, uh, the making of, making a murderer? The Stephen Avery story? Yeah, well, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Stephen Avery is in more trouble than any white person in the history of the United States has ever been in. In a justice system designed for him to thrive, he's failed miserably twice. I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. If making a murder was about a black dude, that shit would be called, duh. <laughs> of course everything can go wrong. Seems like he did it all right. Yeah, the motherfucker even had $200,000 for his legal defense. That should get you off in Wisconsin. That's like OJ money. <laughs> all he needed to get off that he didn't have was a single black juror. That's all it would have took. Because only a black dude in the United States can look at 11 other dudes and be like, I think the police did this shit. <laughs> he's, fuck, he's fucked up in the game. That's how OJ got off. I've been watching that new OJ show. I can't get enough of that shit. Doesn't it bring back good memories? <laughs> but I forgot how, I forgot how, like, just how polarizing that OJ case was. And you know, I've met OJ Simpson on four different occasions in my life. And before the end of the show, I will tell you about each of those occasions. <laughs> 
The first time I met O.J. Simpson, I was in Santa Monica. Santa Monica? Yeah. I can't believe a black dude was like, Santa Monica! You <laughs> was the last niggas I was expecting to say that. I see your shoes. You got some Vans on, nigga? What you got? On? Santa Monica! At the time, I was 18. I had done a show, and then a guy from the club came up and was like, hey, O.J. Simpson's here, and he said he wants to meet you. I said, what? Fuck yeah. I ran down the steps, and O.J. was down there. He was like, hey, yo, man, how are you? It's very good to meet you, and uh, you're doing really good work, and I hope good things happen for you in your life. I was like, man, thanks, Mr. Juice. <laughs> Standing beside him, well, I don't know the nice way to say this, sir. Uh, his soon-to-be slain wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, man the fuck up or you're not gonna make it through the end of this show. Just man the fuck up. She's dead, you already know, we know what happened. We don't know who did it, but we know what happened. <laughs> I should tell you that woman was very nice to me. She actually embraced me. She said, I think you're adorable. And she hugged me. She goes, good luck to you. And she held me for a long time. And I whispered in her ear, bitch, are you trying to get us both killed? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I didn't say that. But that was the first time in a nutshell. It's good to see so many, uh, so many different people here from so many different uh, ethnicities. Very diverse crowd. Looks like he thought Bernie Sanders was gonna come out in this motherfucker, but surprise, it's me. Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, I'm happy really to see black people come. You know, a lot of black people don't fuck with me like they used to. But there's a lot of reasons, there's a few reasons you don't see black people at my shows. One is because obviously black people have slower internet connections. Um, <laughs> I mean, that would be my guess. I'm just, I don't know what... Actually, my own actions drew a wedge between me and the community I hold so dear. A couple of weeks ago, I was supposed to be in Flint, Michigan for a... Um, for a charity benefit that was supposed to raise awareness for the appalling condition of the water in Flint. I don't know if you know this, but the water in Flint is fucking poisonous. It's actually making people sick. I mean, Hollywood people like to sell what? At least they have water. But this water... <laughs> this water's fucked up. So a lot of black celebrities flew into Flint and they did a, 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 a tremendous charity benefit uh, and I was uh, on the schedule to appear. Uh, <laughs> so the reason a lot of people haven't heard about this benefit, it was the same day as the Oscars. Oh, right, I know. So I was on my way to the airport to go to Flint, and then Chris Rock calls me and is like, hey, Dave, I got a ticket for you for the Oscars. Can you make it? And I was like, sure, nigga, I'm on my way to the airport right now. <laughs> Oh, come on, man. What am I going to do about that water? What am I, a fucking superhero? I need to have fun. I need to live, too. I didn't fuck that water up. Stevie Wonder was there. They didn't need me. I'm sorry, everybody. I've never been to the Oscars. You've seen the movies I make. I was excited. I knew I was going to get in some trouble because when I was walking in the red carpet, uh, the black press came after me. Excuse me, brother. You, when you hear somebody call you brother too much, something terrible is about to happen. Excuse me, brother, brother. And then I looked back and the motherfucker had a tuxedo with the kente cloth tie. I said, uh-oh. He said, I just want to ask you a couple questions. I said, well, what publication are you with? He said, me, I'm with the Daily Bongo. I said, Daily Bongo? What the fuck? Who the fuck reads this? 
He said, listen, brother, I just want to ask you a quick question. Um, you understand that this year, this is a, a boycott for the Oscars, so I'm just wondering what made you, of all people, cross the motherfucking picket line and be here tonight. I said, boycott? Nigga, I haven't been working in 10 years. What do you mean, boycott? I've been on strike, y'all niggas didn't stop working. I had to watch fucking Key and Peele do my show every night. Daily Bongo is what I said. I went to Oscars and had a wonderful time. I went to that fucking green room. It was filled with so many stars. I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. Hollywood was seducing me all over again. I was sitting back there. I'm smoking, drinking with the stars. And then two Hollywood movie producers came over right to me. Oh my God, Dave Chappelle said the leader one. He was obviously gay. Some guys, you can just tell. The other one seemed like a money guy, like maybe he was from Texas or some shit. But the gay one was definitely the leader because he did all the talking. And then he hit me with, so David, um, do you have any movie ideas that you would like to pursue? The truth is, I don't. But if you know the game, you're not supposed to tell motherfuckers you don't have ideas. I was like, yeah, man, I got plenty of ideas. And he called my bluff. Really? Like what? Huh? Oh. Um. Um. And then I just, I just started making up shit that I thought maybe he'd like to see. I said, I have a superhero idea. He goes, really? I go, yeah, he's a, um, he's a gay superhero. He was like, really? What's it called? Huh? Oh, it's called, it's called Same Hero New Boots. It's about a gay sous chef in San Francisco. He gets bit by a radioactive rat on his shift when he's taken out the trash. And he's blessed with powers beyond his wildest dreams. Super, sonic, gay kind of powers. And he starts saving everybody in San Francisco. But at first, he only saves gay people. Later, he saves everybody. And the whole city just falls in love with him. The only problem is, no one remembers him when he saves him. Well, I don't understand. Why wouldn't they remember him? I said, because, dummy, he's gay. He keeps changing his outfit. People come up, oh, thanks for saving, mister. What's your name, anyway? And he's like, ugh, oh, same hero, new boots, and that motherfucker flies away. <laughs> he's like, I like it a lot. Texan didn't like that shit at all. He was upset. That's impossible, gay superhero. I said, what? well, I have others. I have a superhero you love because he's stronger than Superman and he fights for truth, justice, and the American way like Superman, but more than Superman. He beats up Mexicans for no reason. <laughs> the Texan's like, you got my attention. I was like, man, this motherfucker is so strong. He can fly and do all this great shit. Only problem with this guy is he can't even activate his powers unless he touches, unless he touches a woman's vagina. <laughs> Not a long touch, just a couple of pats. <laughs> Goddamn right. Good to be home, goddammit. Good to be home, Southeast D.C., that's right. Blue High School. That's what we talk about. It's the real DC. They came to me saying, we're gonna do this special. Where do you want to do it at? Could have did it anywhere in the world. I said, no, I want to come home. I want to come home and see how it is. And God damn it, I'm feeling good. I hope y'all feeling good. I'm feeling good because I got that vaccine. Man, I'm telling you, I got it when it first came out. Line was so long, looked like they was hiring. <laughs> I stood in that motherfucker. I'm like, I hope they don't run out. <laughs> looked like they was running out. It was this old lady, she was 89 in front of me. I just pushed her to the side. Come on, <laughs> Come on mama, you done lived your life. <laughs> you got more problems than this coronavirus. 
You're in a wheelchair with crutches. You're being selfish right now. You're supposed to be home somewhere getting together with the Lord. You're being real selfish. You can't tell black people you took the shot. Oh, they look at you like you done sold out. You put that shit in your body? Ooh, Lord. Ooh, oh, oh, God damn. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Uh, how could you do that? I said the same way you put that cocaine in your nose. You ain't got no problem with that eight ball, motherfucker. But I'm wrong for trusting Fauci. You get your drugs from a nigga in the club in the bathroom. You see him smoking blunt with eight people just smoking it. <laughs> Ooh, just passing it around. You'll take that chance. But I'm wrong for fucking with Fauci. I got a cousin, this motherfucker live in Michigan. He gonna call me and say, quick, I heard bad news. I said, what's wrong? He said, man, I heard you put that poison in your body. How could you do it? I said, nigga, you live in Flint. And you just got out the shower. You ain't got no problem with that folk ass run on your black ass. I mean, it, it'd be a shame of that damn self. When I mean, you from DC, you done took more chances than the vaccine. You know how many women I done fucked with and had a fever? <laughs> I'm like, ooh, you really is sick. I thought you didn't want to give me none. I'm gonna give you some thorough flu in the morning. But you, God bless you, God bless you. I just want motherfuckers to be consistent. Stay hard, no, be, keep that same energy on all the other symptoms you got in your body. Coronavirus is the only shit that's plaguing our community. I want you to be on it. These hypocrites that we got out here. You got brothers out here been wearing a mask straight for 18 months. Ain't seen a dentist in 18 years. Just be chewing on the left side of their mouth. Knowing they can't fuck with that right tooth. Brush their teeth in the morning, sick look like a crime scene. They be trying to hide evidence like they on first 48 hours for shit. Kids coming in looking at this teeth talking about daddy, let me get some of them red hot you eat. I ain't eat no red hot. You ain't eat red hot. Phony ass. You know it. Stay consistent. Be looking all good on the outside. Jordans on their feet, diamonds in their head, flawless on the outside. Inside, blood pressure, higher than giraffe pussy. Type two, three, four, five diabetes. Still standing in line trying to get a Popeye chicken family. Eat four of them motherfuckers. I don't know why I'm dizzy. I took a Benadryl. Benadryl don't help no stroke, motherfucker. Everything ain't your allergies, nigga. Everything ain't your allergies. Left arm be going numb. What's wrong? Oh, that mean it gonna rain this Saturday. What the fuck you mean it's gonna rain this Saturday? Your arm ain't no weatherman, nigga. Go see a doctor. You know who they are. Got car insurance, ain't got no health insurance. He all at the club, look at my new ride, nigga. Full coverage, zero deductible. What about your liver? Oh, I leave that to Jesus. He know my heart. Health is wealth. If you ain't learned shit through this pandemic, that bag don't mean shit if you ain't got your health. You know, you need to know the status of your health. And the only way you're gonna know the status of your health is get a physical. Your president, Barack Obama, put his whole political capital on the line for Obamacare. I got Obamacare. Ain't no way they're gonna put all these hospitals and urgent cares up there and something wrong with my chest, nigga. I'm gonna go home, take a nap, and drink a ginger ale. <laughs> Somebody gonna see me. I'm just gonna have to owe you. When Obamacare came out, nigga, I was on that shit. I feel it out, dee, 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 dee. didn't even wait for a policy number. Sooner they said approval, nigga, I ran straight to the doctor. Hey, what you here for, nigga? I want a full physical. They're like, who your provider? I wrote Obamacare. Because <laughs> that nigga cares. Now I got insurance. I want every test you got in this hospital from A to Z, nigga. Don't skip none of them. I want EKG, EGG, Pat Smear, one of all, motherfucker. Hey, I want ultrasound, mammogram, fibrogram, larigram, an eight ball, that's a half a gram. I want all my grams, nigga. But health is wealth. You will not know the status of your health unless you get a physical. Every year for my birthday, that is my gift to myself. 
we still dying of illness they didn't already cure for. And it's the scary shit in the world because certain people, you know something wrong with your body, but you don't go. See, me personally, I would hate for something be wrong with my damn body, and I never, ever do nothing about it. And then I just let it go and go, and then finally be rushed to the hospital, and doctor like, ooh, if you'd have got here three weeks ago, that shit was just in your ear. Where's that now? In your foot. How long I got? Tomorrow. It's the scary shit in the world. I get a physical every year. This year was no different. Doctor came in, I said, how I'm doing, doc? He said, I got your lab result back. Everything is looking good. You just have one minor discrepancy. I said, what's that? He said, your PSA is high. I said, what's that? He said, that's the indicator of your prostate. You being a black man, prostate cancer is prevalent in your community. What I need you to do is go back and see the reception, make another appointment, come back, I'm gonna do a prostate exam along with your physical. I'm running behind about a month and a half. I should be able to get to see you then. I'm like, fuck that nigga. We doing this shit today. I got Obamacare, nigga. Put that shit on the bill. Let's run that shit up before that Republican can come. I say, you want to do it today? I say, yeah, I want to do it today. So I start rolling up my sleeve. <laughs> yeah, he laughed just like that. He said, nah, we don't do no prostate exam like that. I said, how you do it? He said, we do that with a rectum exam. I said, well, I don't think I got that on my bomber cam. <laughs> I said, I don't think Barack could do that shit to me. He said, just go on the other one. should be able to find what you're looking for. I'm gonna whoop your ass, doc. I'm gonna ask you one more time, are you sure this is the only way you can check my prostate? Because if I go home and I Google and I find this another test, I'm gonna come back here and whoop your motherfucking ass in front of all this equipment. 
So I went on and been back over. Come on, let's get this bullshit over with. He lift up my gown. I say, oh, shit. It's about to go down. And he lifted it up and he broke me off. I'm like, ooh, goddamn. He said, don't worry, it ain't gonna take long. I said, you ain't got long. <laughs> Hurry up and find what you're looking for. He kept moving his finger in and out of my ass. I said, fuck it, take your finger out of my ass. If I got prostate cancer, leave it in there. I'm just gonna have to take it up with the Lord. But you ain't just gonna rotate your finger in and out of my ass like this no more, sir. Take your finger out of my ass immediately, sir. Stop right now. No means no, sir. 